एक्सामिनार हिसाब से परीक्षा निबे से देख प्रफेसर खालेद मसिम तरह एसिस्टेंट प्रफेसर डर ए के मनोरुल इसलम परवर्ती डिसकाशन कर डर आब्दुल मोम खुब इंटरेस्टिंग कथा बोली तीन प्रजन्म छात्ररा शिक्षक हिसाब से आफेसर खालेद मोसिन छात्र उन्नी रेजिस्ट्रार छे आर डर मनोरल इसलम उन्नी छात्र खुबी चमत्कार एक गुरु परम्परा से देखी एसायलिटी कन्जिटल हार्ट डिजीज द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग इज इफ यू डु नट डायगनोस इट एट द प्रपार टाइम द कम्प्लीकेशन दैट उल बी डेभलपिंग मोस्टलि एज पालमन हाइपार टेंशन इज रियलि रियलि डेभेस्टेटिव वन स्टीच इन ए टाइम If you do not do it, it will be not twelve stitch, maybe hundred stitch. If you delay it, sometimes the whole procedure become unoperable. We cannot correct it. So diagnosing it properly, taking the proper decision to treat it. For that, you need not only investigative support. You really need. the proper history taking and examination skill today's class the virtual class is all about that how to take the proper history how to examine these patients how to reach a proper decision about the medical treatment about the interventional treatment about the surgical treatment tai niye ajke amader shikshokra kotha bolbe खालेद मोशीन सर इनिभार्सल मेडिकल कलेज कार्लोजी प्रफेसर मनोर आोम आदरक जतियों हृदरक इन्स्टिट्यूटी तरा सबाई शिक्षक तूब भलो शिक्षक उल बी होपिंग दैट उल बी डेजल्ट बै द ग्लैमार अब देर क्लिनिकल एक्मेंट लेडिज एंड जेंटलमैन Let us enjoy the show together. Our manner, hi, manner. Apni chole ashen. Khalid Mohsin sir, ek to wait korte hobe kono thakar janjot bikha to tar proman kichhu ta amra paachi uni chole ashen. Tanfi histi na shuru korte pare. Apni porikhar hole je bhabe, she bhabe shuru korte. Thank you, परीक्षा के लंग टेस्ट प्रेजेंट करते हैं फीचार हमारी जब हम एक्सप्लेनेशन दे बता लेंगे इसका मतलब अब वो ये ये कोड़ा कोलो लॉन्ग केस मतलब सेलेक्ट जब प्रेजेंट कोलो क्लिनिकल फाइनल प्रेजेंट कोलो तार पर एक कोर्सिंग फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री तक ये थे शेक वो था को था भूल कोड़े छात्रों का कॉमनली को था भूल कोड़े पार्टिकुलर पॉइंट पे सब डिटेल्स � जोड़े 
may I request you to present the salient features of this okay sir kotha shunte pacchi na this moni 15 years old uh, hailing from borisha admitted in national institute of cardiovascular disease on last 24 august with the complaints of uh, shortness of breath for the last 6 months and palpitation for cell duration according to the statement of the patient she was reasonably well about 6 months back uh, then she developed uh, shortness of breath which was gradually increasing day by day and on query uh, she informed that the shortness of breath uh, occurred mostly in during exertion or day to day life activities like uh, clothing the clothes or uh, tube oil uh, tube water uh, activities and going upstairs. Uh, she also uh, informed that the shortness of breath was absent during rest and there was no sleep disturbances during this period. And uh, she also complained that there was palpitation which was commonly associated with exertion and during shortness of breath. There is no history of any associated chest discomfort or chest pain, uh, fever, any syncopal attack, any swelling of the body, or any other problems like uh, loss of blood with cough. And uh, <clears throat> uh, also on query about the past medical history, she did not complain any symptoms in her childhood, like any shortness of breath, palpitation, or chest discomfort in her early childhood life. And uh, there is no significant any past medical or any other surgical history. And uh, she, uh, about her birth history, she was delivered by normal vaginal delivery and it was uneventful. And after uh, that, uh, she was developed normally and uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, growth and intellectual functions was quite normal. And uh, about family history, she has three siblings, all of them are healthy and they have no any similar problems and her parents are in good health right now. She does not have any other comorbidities like any diabetes, hypertension, or bronchial asthma. And she does not take any other medications for any other medical conditions. <clears throat> and <clears throat> uh, uh, on further query, she informed that she had parietal bleeding about one year back. That's why she required two unit of blood transfusion at that time. This is all about history. And on examination, uh, she was cooperative body build was below average and she was anxious or ill looking and decubitus on choice. Blood pressure was about 110 over 70 millimeter mercury bilaterally in both hands. There was no postural drop of the blood pressure and the pulse volume was normal. Rate was about 110 beats per minute, regular <coughs> in sinus rhythm. No, <coughs> there was no radio radial or radio femoral delay. And um, <coughs> Temperature was normal, respiratory rate was about 20 beats per minute. And the JVP was not raised, there was no peripheral edema. All other general exhaustion findings were normal. <clears throat> On precordium examination, size and shape of the chest was normal, no chest deformity is present. Apex bit is, was located in uh, left fifth intercostal space, about nine centimeter from mid clavicular line, and it is forceful, ill sustained. And there is palpable P2 present and left personality present. No uh, palpable field was present. <clears throat> and on auscultation, first heart sound was soft, second heart sound was uh, loud, and there was um, wide and fixed splitting of the second heart sound present. And uh, uh, no other added sound was present. And on auscultation of lung bases, no crepitations, breath sound was vesicular no other addition was present. And other systemic examination, including abdominal neurological systemic examination reveals no abnormalities. And uh, patient was uh, mildly anemic. This is all about my salient features. Okay. In your history, uh, have you uh, taken the after the salient feature? Would you like to be telling <coughs> clinical diagnosis as part of the salient feature? Yes. Uh, the uh, should come as part of the salient feature. 
Okay. Uh, so my professional diagnosis is um, atrial septal defect with uh, pulmonary hypertension, with mitral regurgitation, with anemia. So you have made the diagnosis of atrial septal defect, pulmonary hypertension, mitral regurgitation. Yes. Okay. In your history, uh, have you taken the history of uh, chest pain? Yes, sir. I mentioned there was no associated chest discomfort or chest pain. Palpitation? Palpitation was present for the six months. Okay. Then whenever you are taking a history and you are uh, suspecting that this may be a case of heart disease, all yes, these sir. features should be considered. Yes. And associated you should not miss anything. Yes, sir. And also, whenever you are qualifying, as you are a postgraduate examinee, whenever you are qualifying the breathlessness, you should better uh, settle this in terms of NYHA. NYHA classification you should better mention this and uh, if, if there is any relationship with posture or any seasonal variation this should be emphasized okay sir in your examination can i ask you yes sir when the patient uh, when the student is giving long history uh, should he mention the level of this in terms of patient language or should he mention in terms of doctor's language, NIH class? Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, because he is just presenting the salient feature. And in that uh, uh, case, many examiners prefer to uh, hear about the NIH. Exactly. I mean, uh, that's what I emphasize. When you are giving salient feature, you can use the term like this, not for such of that. You can use the term NIH level this. Okay. Because you are giving the salient feature, you, will, you can use your own language to, a, to some extent, yes. Okay, and <clears throat> during presentation, examiners want to hear about the uh, history consistent with rheumatic fever. This is also okay. Okay, very important whenever you are presenting such a case. And after that, when you have completed the presentation of the history and going to the clinical examination, you have mentioned that size and shape of the precordium, uh, everything uh, normal. But mind it, you are dealing with a young lady and uh, who is having everything covered. Better you should just confess this or realize this that I could not expose the patient properly okay, because sir. of the uh, local customs or Tradition. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, sir. Sir. Exactly. I mean, it's a point of combined A female patient to properly You can use the term apparently. Apparently, the side shape appears to be normal. Okay, sir. Because I have seen partial covered chest, but it appears normal. All that much you can say whether the cardiac impulse is visible or not. Picordial impulse and service. Yes. Right. And then you are going to just the palpation. In examining these sorts of young lady, yes, sir. having apparent a cardiac examination, we give more emphasis on the palpatory findings rather than inspector inspection. Inspection. Yeah, inspection findings because of lack of exposure. So uh, you are right that you have rightly mentioned the location of the apex bit. Yes. You have qualified that the apex bit is located in the left fifth intercostal space huh? and yes, it is, is sustained and forceful. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Again, uh, I want to qualify one thing. We have mentioned, of course, the hypothesis have already arrived. Oh, we are so lucky. Uh, whenever you are describing the apex, please describe in two things. Okay. That apex is located in that space and relationship with the left reflectular line. Please always mention that. Because nine centimeter in my chest and nine centimeter in that dark state is hugely different in terms of reflectular line. 
Yes, this is always, very important. Always mention what is the relationship with left leg to the right. Is it beyond its media, its act? You have mentioned rightly that it is in the left fifth intercostal space, yes, 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 and yes. ideally you should mention up to half a centimeter from the mid sternal line. And sometimes we do not mind if you qualify this that it is lateral to the mid clavicular line or medial to the mid clavicular line. This may be enough. Okay. And uh, forceful, ill sustained, mind yes. it. You have just mentioned this. Number one. Number two. Uh, after qualifying the apex, then you are going to left parasternal heel. And have you got the left parasternal heel? Yes, sir. I got left parasternal heel. I got. And palpable P2? Yes, sir. Palpable, uh, palpable present. P2 yes, present. Sir. And then you have mentioned that the faster sound is soft. Yes. The faster sound is soft. soft. And you have mentioned that the second heart sound is loud. Yes. Sir. But Whenever you are mentioning that second heart sound is loud, this is not enough. You have to qualify which component of the second heart sound is loud. Whether it okay. is B2 is loud or A2 is loud, you have to qualify this. Okay. Manuel. Which do you think the pulmonary component or the aortic component of the second heart sound no, is sir, loud? Pulmonary component. Pulmonary component of the second heart sound is loud. Sir. Uh, while we are uh, commenting about the apex speed, it's, a, it's important to mention that, that how many intercostal spaces it is occupying. Is it one space or more than one space? And the dynamicity of the apex, is it it's medially directed or is it laterally directed? If, if you mention it, it will be okay, sir. added uh, impression to the examiner. Right? It will be. Okay, sir. So you have to specify the component of the second heart sound that you have found abnormal. I think you are going to tell that the second pulmonary component pulmonary of the second component. sound is loud. Yes, loud sir. Okay. Then come to the murmur. Yes, sir. What was the murmur? Description of the murmur? Uh, murmur is present. It is action systolic murmur present in the left upper parasternal area. And also a systolic murmur present, which is uh, predominated in the apex and also heart in the left lower parasternal area and radiates to the uh, left axilla. Then you are having two, two different two murmurs. murmurs. One is in the upper left, left upper parasternal area. area. That is ejection systolic murmur. murmur. Whenever you are describing a murmur, you have to touch every point regarding the type of the murmur that is ejection systolic murmur. Ah, grade. Grade is very important. Whether this is 4 by 6 or 5 by 6 or 2 by 6, you have to qualify this. And then you have to mention the radiation, whether the marmaj is having any, any radiation or not, or it is or is it localized or not. This is important. And then you have to qualify whether this is uh, uh, best heart in the sitting position, leaning forwards, or in the lying position, or left lateral position. And what is the behavior with respiration? This is very important. Whether it increases with in inspiration or not, this is very important. And then uh, also the second murmur. This is uh, another another second, another murmur you are mentioning that this is uh, it's situated in the uh, epical, area. epical area. And in the same manner, you have to qualify the death murmur also. Some examiners uh, uh, sometimes think it challenging that during the examination, you are qualifying two different murmurs uh, so efficiently. So be careful regarding this. And before the murmur, you have also mentioned that you have got wide fixed splitting of the second second sound. Mind it. So you are committing some sorts of diagnosis. You are going to make an uh, important diagnosis ultimately. Regarding the systolic problem in the epical area, the same thing apply that uh, its location, whether it is uh, radiating or not, to which direction, and what is the intensity of the murmur, best heart with the bell or, or diaphragm of the stethoscope, breath holding, expiration or inspiration, everything should be mentioned. Okay, okay sir. Uh, anything, sir? Uh, whenever you are describing a murmur, uh, some examiners prefer to know 
that the change of the murmur with at least three dynamic auscultation maneuvers. Number one is the standing, number two is valsalva, number three is hand -free. Yes, this is very important, especially if you are dealing with a murmur at the base of the heart. Okay, this is very important. Huh? So all these features should be touched. And after that, radiate to the axilla, also to the lower sternal area. Is it true? Is that the opposite direction of a radiation of a murmur? It, one murmur cannot radiate. Uh, sir, the... it's radiating to axilla, left axilla. Left axilla. The thing is, even having, is even hearing another murmur in the left, left lower, lower parastone area. area. Because we have language are confused. You are we have heard the murmur in here and also in here. You should say it's more prominent in the apex with radiation towards that area. But okay. there is also a murmur heart in the lower left standard area. What that could be? So transmitted, so not radiation, that might be. Now, what else are the other okay. things? Uh, okay. agitation. Why? What is the cause of the tricuspid degradation? Mm -hmm. Pulmonary hypertension can cause tricuspid degradation. Hypertension. Hypertension. Can cause tricuspid degradation. Any other explanation? Uh, that that murmur is a systolic murmur. Okay. Systolic murmur. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Or there may be some sort of extra diagnosis. Extra diagnosis. Say you are dealing with a case of tricuspid degradation. What should be the nature of the apex bit in that case? Mm -hmm. uh, RV type apex, right ventricular hypertrophy. Should it be ill sustained forceful? No, mm -hmm. no, sir. So, is it consistent with this diagnosis? You uh, no, sir. Uh, as apex is uh, forceful, ill sustained, it's not consistent with trichospital agitation. Right. What may be the logical diagnosis? Mitral regurgitation. The only explanation may be mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation. But if, say, the diagnosis is mitral regurgitation, what should be the position of the apex bit? Uh, apex bit uh, shifted. It's I expect that should be shifted. That should be shifted. Infralateral. 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 And then it may be will sustain forceful. Yes, sir. Huh? And you have mentioned that the faster sound is soft. That is also consistent with the diagnosis of mitral regurgitation. And the pulmonary component of the second heart sound is loud. Loud. So before making two separate diagnoses, just one is ASD, ASD. and another one is mitral regurgitation. Always think of making a single diagnosis, okay, sure. septal defect. And due to the presence of significant pulmonary hypertension, there may be tricuspid regurgitation that may be consistent. So you have okay. to be cautious. Okay, Otherwise, sir. you have to explain that the patient is really having mitral regurgitation. Okay. Is this possible? Uh, in that, say you are right that the patient is having at the same time a tear septal defect and mitral regurgitation. What may be the uh, that could be possible, sir? Uh, How? Uh, mitral valve prolapse. Right. It could cause uh, MR. In, in around one fifth of the cases of atrial septal defect, there may be mitral valve uh, concomitant mitral valve prolapse. Associated mitral valve prolapse. If there is significant mitral valve prolapse, that may lead to mitral regurgitation, and ultimately, this is consistent. But yes, sir. It be a before... cleft mitral leaflet? Exactly. Yes, sir. But why not how? And what is the uh, type of murmur you get in case of left mitral leaflet and what is the type of murmur you get in the image camera? Is there any difference? Mm, not no, sir. Left mitral leaflet, in which condition this is commonly associated? In this context, say mm. this is the lady with left mitral leaflet and atrial septal leaflet. In which type of atrial septal leaflet? Mm. Is it second It's the second term, sir. You are making the diagnosis of second term ASD, but left metal lifted may be commonly associated with 
AST primum. Primum type of AST. This may be. Okay. Or there may be mitral valve prolapse. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, is there any defense, uh, Professor Maha? Is yes. there any defense in the uh, type of murmur uh, sound we get in cat mitral leaflet and limit camera? This is another important question. Do you know it? No, sir. Uh, left mitral leaflet, mitral degurgitation caused by left mitral leaflet and mitral degurgitation caused by rheumatic heart disease. Question. Mitral degurgitation, rheumatic MR is colossal. But what about left mitral leaflet? And also there are some differences in the radiation of the murmur. Radiation of the murmur. In case of a rheumatic murmur, it typically radiates to the left axilla. But left mitral leaflet murmur may not radiate towards the left axilla. Exactly. They radiate differentially towards the back. Exactly. And also in case of rheumatic MR, this may be commonly accompanied by mitral stenosis as well. So the faster sound nature may be uh, dependent on the predominant lesion, but in case of left mitral leaflet, this may not be the same. If this is a case of mitral valve products, yes. in that case, also the murmur is not typically pan systolic, it is mid or mid systolic, systolic. Mid or late systolic, and that may be accompanied by uh, click, mid click. systolic, click. mid systolic. Click. Can that you be typically explain the mechanism of mitral valve prolapse in ostium second damage? Is the valve myxomatous or the mechanism is something different? Actually, in secondum ASD, the LV is relatively small. It is very difficult to accommodate the whole mitral valve apparatus, the leaflet, the body, papillary muscle, and the septum, it uh, moves in a reverse direction. And this paradoxical movement of the septum and the small left ventricle all leads to the mitral valve prolapse. Okay. So, when calcoro, JP ASD, LFK is the black to the preferentially low pressure job, right at your Some left ventricle is getting small amount, lesser amount of blood. Number two, J Tuma J Yeta Hulu data, how many hypertension develop for you? Normally, IPS is part of left ventricle. But the pulmonary hypertension developed from the IPS to shift to it, the bulging to right fit with the left ventricle to get to left ventricle. The calcified is the bullshit. To mark if the palm becomes too big for the smaller ventricle, redundancy of palm. That may be one reason for the cane, but let a every second time on the EFI, metal hypertension. Sir, I to Mesca Sir is watching the gate to the Mesca Sir, should the watching, sir. হিস্ট্রি মনোরমাদের এক্সামিনে খালিদ মুসিদ আছেন আপনার কোনো क्वेश्चन আছে কিনা স্যার এখানে স্যার আচ্ছা আমার হ্যাঁ আমার একটু অবজারভেশন আছে সেটা হলো যে এই پیشنটের আমি হিস্ট্রি নিয়ে একটু কথা বলতে চাই আনলাইক ক্লিনিক্যাল এক্সামিনেশন মানে এক্সামিনেশন ছাড়া হিস্ট্রি নিয়ে কথা বলতে চাই সেটা হলো যে پیشنটার আমরা দুইটা সম্ভাব্য ডায়াগনোসিস কিংবা একটা একটা ডায়াগনোসিস নিয়েও চিন্তা করতে পারি সেটা হলো پیشنটের হয়তো অ্যাট্রিয়াল সেপটাল ডিফেক্ট উইথ মাইট্রাল ভালভ প্রলাপস থাকতে পারে আবার পেশেন্টের শুধু মাইট্রাল শুধু মাইট্রাল লিগাজিটেশন থাকতে পারে যেটা মনে বলতেছিলাম এই সমস্ত ক্ষেত্রে হিস্ট্রিটা খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইম্পর্টেন্ট যেমন ইউ হ্যাভ মেনশন দ্যাট দ্য পেশেন্ট ইজ গিভিং দ্য হিস্ট্রি অফ এক্সারশনাল ডিসনিয়াম এন্ড ইউ কনফাইন ইউর হিস্ট্রি আপ টু দি এক্সারশনাল ডিসনিয়াম কিন্তু তোমরা খেয়াল করবে যদি মাইট্রাল লিগাজিটেশনের জন্য এই শর্টনেস অফ ব্রেসটা হয়ে থাকতো তাহলে এই শর্টনেস অফ ব্রেথের কারণ হতো লেফট ভেন্টিকুলার ফেইলিয়র সেক্ষেত্রে অর্থোপনিয়া কিংবা প্যারোক্সিজমাল নকচারনাল ডিসনিয়া ছিল কি না এই হিস্ট্রিটা নেগেটিভ হিস্ট্রি হিসেবে খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট যদি অর্থপনিয়া নকচারনাল ডিসনিয়া থাকে তাহলে কিন্তু আমাদের সমস্ত ফোকাস 
प्रधान कज हल फिबुलेशनिटर সে ক্ষেত্রে পালপিটিশনের হিস্ট্রিটা আরেকটু ডিটেইলস এ বলতে পারতে কারণ অ্যাট্রিয়াল ফিবুলেশনেও কিন্তু এক্সারশনাল পালপিটিশন হয় আবার অ্যাট্রিয়াল ফিবুলেশন রেস্টেও হতে পারে তো সেই ক্ষেত্রে যদি অ্যাট্রিয়াল ফিবুলেশন আমরা চিন্তা করি অনেক সময় আমরা হাতের তালি তালু মানে তালি দিয়ে আমরা এটা বোঝানোর চেষ্টা করি যে রিদমটা ঠিক আছে কিনা জাস্ট ট্রাই করি অনেক ইন্টেলিজেন্ট پیشنটা সেটা কিন্তু বলতে পারে যে রেগুলার কিংবা ইররেগুলার তোমার হিস্ট্রিতে সেটা আসলে পরে তোমার মানে উইজডমটা প্রকাশ পেতে আর কি ठीक है चार्पर्मल समानुपाय डायगनसिसल मार्टर फेलियर जियोमेट्रिकल चेन्जर Actually, there are there are all many in many cases, almost in one third cases, 
there is a mitral valve prolapse in ASD secundum type. ASD secundum is probably one third, third three anatomical cause of the mitral valve prolapse. That is, this is all very good. And you have mentioned that you have mentioned that you have no pulmonary component of the second heart sound. But the atrial septal defect is that you have pulmonary artery pulsation. I have to laterally go. That is, that is what you have done. I have done a lot of work. आर आरेक तर शेष कथा हमार तुम्हार शंपो के सिटे हुलो जे ब्लड प्रेशर तुम्ही इन बोथ हैंड बोल सो बोथ आर्म बोल बा बच्चो कारण आर्म इज 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 डिफरेंट फ्रॉम हैंड ए जिन्हीं गुलत तुम्हारे स्पार्ट में स्टेप रिफ्लेक्ट करें आरके तो आमर आमर जिगल ऑब्जर्वेशन चिलो शिगल आमी बोल लाम Clinically, yes, sir. What are the features that are in favor of pulmonary hypertension? Uh, left parasternal hip present and palpable P2 present. And uh, anything else? Uh, Can uh, auscultation help you? Uh, uh, murmur like tricuspid as a different murmur, anything else? Second heart sound, loud pulmonary component of pulmonary second heart sound. component of the second heart second sound. Heart sound one of the telltale signs of pulmonary hypertension. Yes, so you have to give proper emphasis on this. Okay, sir. And besides the any other clinical signs that may help you, mm. any murmur, tricuspidic agitation. Any other murmur, other mm. pulmonary valve murmur. Uh, pulmonary regurgitation. Pulmonary regurgitation. Also. Also. So, with all these features, you can mention that this lady may have pulmonary pulmonary hypertension clinically. Okay, clinically pulmonary hypertension. So, by this time, your provisional diagnosis is atrial septal defect right. with pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension, and also also mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation. Then, how will you investigate this patient? Okay. Uh, I'd like sir, to do... Sorry, one thing. In your history, you have mentioned that this lady was having uh, hematochagia, yes. which is bleeding per rectum, per rectum. Uh, one year back. Probably. One year back. Yeah. What may be the explanation? Last and uh, the loss of blood can cause uh, anemia, most likely iron deficiency anemia, can cause the similar symptoms like uh, exertional shortness of breath. No, I am not mentioning this because in your examination you have not mentioned that this lady is anemic significantly uh, i told no. that anemic mild anemia mild anemia at right now but what is my query is that is there any relationship between your present clinical diagnosis and the history of significant bleeding per rectum one year back uh, no but uh, as patient got one unit blood transfusion uh, before admitting this hospital about two weeks back uh, got another blood transfusion uh, that, that's why I uh, mentioned that. Uh, Just two weeks back. Two weeks back, no, yes. Two weeks back. Two weeks back. She had got another one uh, unit blood transfusion. One, another one unit of blood, blood transfusion, transfusion for anemia. For anemia. Uh, the, my question, I would have been asking this. We have given uh, a, a due importance to the reading episode and history of transfusion. But he has not mentioned anything in the final provisional diagnosis. Yes. He should have. Anemia is uh, related to parental, parental bleeding, the cause of which is uh, not apparent. The lady may have, say, hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids. or bleeding rectal polyps, or like this. Any other problem? Uh, yes. Well, I have just one yes. question. You have mentioned that the patient has got pulmonary hypertension, yes? Yes, clinically. Sir. Yes, sir. Does she have any cyanosis? Clinically apparent cyanosis? Uh, no, sir. No. No cyanosis. No cyanosis. Uh, what, what is, is the important? mechanism of cyanosis in a patient with ASD? Uh, Eisenmenger syndrome, sir. Uh, shunting, uh, reversal of the shunt from yes. right to left. Is it the commonest mechanism? Commonest. Can you uh, comment of any other mechanism? Uh, if is there an associated pulmonary stenosis? It goes right to left shunt and uh, cyanosis. There is another mechanism. This is very a, a bit uncommon. Have you heard about the eustachian valve? Yes, sir. Valve of the inferior vena cava. I heard. Uh, whenever the inferior vena cava flow is coming, the eustachian valve can divert the inferior vena cava flow to the SB, to the left side. 
so, without any shunt to vessel. Okay. In this way, the patient can have cyanosis without Eisenmenger syndrome. And the remnants of eustachian valve or the thevesian valve is more or less common. Okay. And often, clinically, during echocardiography, we may encounter cheering network. That is also one of the evidence of these embryonic remnants. Okay. Uh, Regarding, no. regarding the uh, uh, presence of eustachian valve, sometimes surgeons may mistakenly uh, uh, close the ASD rims with the eustachian valve. One yes. happened. So this is very important for everyone that we should not mistaken is as a, uh, a rim of ASD. So it is very important even during device closure also. Sometimes it is so difficult that what is which one was the I visited it and which one was the eustachian valve. The, the point, diagnostic point is, it is the eustachian valve in the lower part of the IVC and the uh, IVC rim in the upper part of the IVC. So we can differentiate. And then is there any association between PLPC and presence of eustachian valve? Yes. PLPC is associated with but uh, I don't know whether uh, I should have it. Uh, PLSBC is also an association. Do you think your patient is having reversal of the shunt or mm -hmm. Eisenberg syndrome? No, sir. Why? Uh, because there is no feature of any cyanosis and uh, there is no hand chest like clubbing absent. Cyanosis, no, no, clubbing absent. Other features. Yeah. What are the points that may be in favor of? Eisenbender syndrome. Okay. Uh, there are some negative features you have already mentioned. Sure. But what are the features that may be in favor? Okay. Some, some features from of pulmonary hypertension. Features of pulmonary hypertension. Okay. Also, um, from the history, is there any uh, exertional uh, problem and any changes in the color of the hands and lips during exertion? How okay. will you going to I confirm your? Diagnosis. What will be the signs of uh, uh, what is the quality of the marmar and the splitting of the second heart sound if the Eisenbenzer develops? You have mentioned there is a injection systemic marmar and click, uh, uh, splitting of the second heart sound. That will be present in uh, Eisenbenzer. No, sir. Is there any change? So, uh, uh, marmar is, will be absent, sir. Yes, absent and or very short. About, and splitting, splitting will be absent also. Splitting. Uh, splitting, will splitting may be absent. Uh, will there be any change? Mm, Why don't fixed it will, sir? That's the culture of ASD, but when you develop Eisenbenzer syndrome, uh, it's it will be a single component, and that component will be loud. The splitting will okay. be very much narrow. That will be loud. Loud. Okay, okay, sir. Then. How will you plan to investigate this patient? Okay, uh, plan of investigation, some, uh, I'll do ECG, chest x ray PA view, also echocardiography, 2D M mode and color Doppler, also uh, do cardiac catheterization and um, some basic investigations like complete blood count. And, uh, and this 2021, another investigation that uh, may be mentioned that is cardiac city. Cardiac it is city. getting city. more and more yeah. in yeah. okay. And yeah. also transesophageal echo. Dr. Momen is doing yes. most of his patients transesophageal yes. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, can I ask you something? Yes. When you say the echocardiography, you mentioned to the component color doctor. How are you going to measure the pressure gradient if you do not use? Uh, it's spectral Doppler. Right. Better okay. to drop the term but color Doppler. Doppler. Amount and Doppler. Both spectral and color. Hey, no, no, color. No, no, no. This is, uh, I think, a mistake commonly it's done, it's even by cardiologists. Now, amount and Doppler study. Doppler in two, two types. Doppler spectral study. Doppler and color practice. What do you expect in ECG? Uh, uh, right bundle branch block. And uh, Excess deviation, I will check excess deviation. To what direction? Uh, for uh, right excess right deviation, uh, cause uh, in case of ASD secundum, I'll find right excess deviation. Right excess deviation. And which is the typical nature of bundle branch block in association with ASD? 
right bundle branch block is there any further qual qualification of this right bundle branch block classically incomplete 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 right bundle branch block with right axis division right axis division is the classical feature asd secondum in ecg in case of asd, ASD secondum what about asd prima uh, right bundle branch block with left axis division incomplete incomplete right bundle branch block with left axis deviation what are the other features that may be present in ecg uh, it can cause right features of right ventricular hypertrophy right atrial enlargement and also uh, uh, left atrial are... enlargement yeah. and also rhythm i will check for rhythm it is sinus rhythm or atrial fibrillation in the ecg okay in this particular patient, if the diagnosis is atrial septal defect with mitral regurgitation, what are the expected findings in ECG? Uh, mitral regurgitation uh, can cause um, left atrial enlargement, left ventricular hypertrophy, also can cause at associated atrial fibrillation. So in your case, there may be biventricular hypertrophy. Biventricular. If the diagnosis is correct. Yes, sir. If and clinical diagnosis is correct, is I could find. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Then come to the chest X-ray. Yes, sir. Hold is gold. Yes, what are the classical features that you are expecting with the diagnosis of this lady? Mm, sir, cardiomegaly. And cardiomegaly. Uh, if uh, uh, which type of cardiomegaly? Uh, apex or right ventricular type. In what case? Uh, in case of ASD. You are having two types of diagnosis. So two separate. In that diagnosis. case, uh, uh, if your lesion is predominantly ASD. Sir. Why is the apex? In apex. This uh, left fifth intercostal space. It has not been shifted. No, sir. So not likely shifted. that the lady is having significant Inter no, predominant lesion is ASD. ASD. In, that, in case, that case, what may be the classical features in chest X-ray? Mm, cardiomegaly is right ventricular type of apex. Do you expect and cardiomegaly? Cardiomegaly. Yes, sir, cardiomegaly. No. Why? Usually, in case of ASD, there is no cardiomegaly. Why cardiomegaly? Okay. okay. Hmm? Can, can this patient, I, I, let's say, for argument's sake, I said this patient is likely to have cardiomegaly. Yes. And why? Yes. What may be the explanation? Uh, the patient's power hypertension. The right atria is getting double load. Both volume overload and pressure overload. Right atria will hit and So right side, on the right side, the heart will be shifted, shadow. But on the left side, it's the that that like. It will be a little bit. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, can you make any comment about the magnitude of the shunt by looking at the chest exactly. Very important. And before that, I'd like to know what are the other classical features in chest x ray in a patient with ASD? Very common question. What are the other expected findings? You have mentioned that your patient is having cardiomegaly, but in the usual case, there is no cardiomegaly. Next, uh, sir, uh, signs of pulmonary infection. Infection, uh, pulmonary. Before that, uh, classical pictures. How can you make the diagnosis? Say you are 30 years back and you have only chest x ray and DCG in, as a tool of diagnosis at the bedside. What are the other features that you are expecting in chest x ray? Is there any change in pulmonary chronic essence? heart failure? Uh, uh, pulmonary artery, artery dilated. Pulmonary artery dilated. Central pulmonary arteries are dilated. This, yes. What about the lung vascularity? Uh, predominant with vascularity. Vascularity predominant nothing. Vascularity increased, normal or reduced? Increased. Or there is peripheral bleeding. I would expect increased lung vascularity. Increased vascularity. Increased vascularity. Oligemic, Oligemic lung failure. Hyperemia. 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 Increased vascularity. Plethoric. In, in, in this pulmonary arteries are dilated. Huh? Okay, sir. And what else? And the characteristic feature is apex. What about the apex? Right ventricular type. Right ventricular apex. type. What do you mean by right ventricular type of apex in chest x uh, It's uh, It uh, turns towards uh, lateral and upwards. It is, it is upturned. Upturned. And the angle between the left, left, maybe the angle, 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 angle present, angle present becomes cardiophonic angle. Left cardiophonic angle becomes acute. Acute. This is the classical, acute. classical picture. 
any other x-ray can help you uh, do you like to have any further access sir lateral view right why what is the importance Which of lateral, lateral, view? lateral field? chest x-ray lateral view sir Which lateral view? right lateral or left lateral use proper term so left lateral left lateral what are the expected findings in lateral film in your patient what is the important because i am having just extra peer view and i think this is enough but you are asking for lateral film what is the rationality behind this is there any importance anyone do you think lateral, lateral film is important do you think Lateral anyone? view in ASD patient with pulmonary hypertension. What are the expected findings? Right, you are working in Upadala Health Complex and you do not have access to echocardiography. Extend to pulmonary hypertension, you get the answer. Because the extension of the health view to the there. The extension the key to the level the key about pulmonary hypertension level should cover for that. <laughs> now, whatever, whenever you are looking at the hilum, if the right main pulmonary artery diameter is more than the right principal bronchus diameter, or the right lower pulmonary artery diameter is more than 17 millimeters, you be sure that the shunt is more than 1.5 is to 1. I mean, what I know, the legal merit is a basically legal merit is a urgent fully to one eater. After a millimeter, but a short through machine. Right club alumni artery, after a whole body, what are the care of the evidence of a shanty and the belief critical one per five. The importance of lateral field is that only by observing the lateral field, you can be sure radiologically that this patient is having. Right ventricular enlargement. No other way. Right. No other way. Because whenever right ventricle enlarges or hypertrophies, the retro sternal space, the space Easy. between the sternum and the anterior border of the heart is reduced. Okay. And it is directly proportional to the degree of enlargement of the right ventricle. This is the only way. Yes. And whenever the left atrium enlarges, the retro cardiac space decreases. So this is the beauty of examining a lateral film in a patient with suspected congenital heart disease to be sure that which chamber is preferentially enlarged. I mean, this is the lateral film day, normally to know lower one third day, cardiac shadow, the sternal base of the third day, upper two third day. Jokuni, more than 50% of the child, the community take it to right medical significant reality. Yes. The lung cell paper, eh? When I, uh, regarding the lungs, which is, is a plethoric lung. Any association of ASD with some hypoplasia of lung, right side? This is to some extent advanced question. Scimitar syndrome. Scimitar. You, you, should, you should know if you are going to have honors mark. management no. Okay. Uh, should we, we discuss to some extent on echocardiography? Yes, because sure. Is the bread and butter of no, sure, sure. What are the expected findings in echocardiography in a classical patient with uh, atrial septal defect? Mm, sir, <clears throat> in apical four chamber view, I would like uh, to see right atrial enlargement, right ventricle enlargement, and uh, atrial septal defect, apical four chamber view. And in uh, uh, do you use the term atrial septal defect? What is the echo term we use? Classical terminology. You should apply that. The presence of uh, which is the typical description of the lesion in the interatrial septum. Echo drop During out. Echo drop out. Echo drop out. This is the fixed term that you should use. And then what else? And uh, in short axis view, uh, there is a D-shaped uh, left ventricle because of uh, 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 volume overload in the right ventricle. D-shaped. D-shaped. And pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension. Characteristically, D-shaped persistent defect only uh, occurs in case of significant pressure overload. Pressure overload. Pressure overload. Okay, next. And parasternal uh, long axis view. 
and uh, you I can mention that you have mentioned you are mentioned. getting right ventricular right volume of load septal uh, movement uh, increased. How can Doppler echo help you? Uh, Doppler echo to uh, position and uh, position of the defect and shunts gradients. Before that, Doppler echo is very very essential for echocardiographic confirmation of the diagnosis of atrial septal defect. How? Levita flow blood from left atrium to right. Typical uh, description right atrium into the right. Atrium. Classically, okay. you have to examine the patient during echocardiography in subcostal view, and you are getting laminar flow across the defect in the interactive septum. Okay. okay. Laminar flow across the defect in the interactive septum. This is very important. Next question will be why in this position is important. I am not going to that extent. But the actor question. Hmm. Why am I saying laminar flow? And this why, is how important. do we understand from color play basing is laminar flow? How can you be sure that this is laminar flow? Laminar flow means it's not turbulent flow. This is virtually the only congenital lesion where you are going to have laminar flow across the defect. Can anyone answer? These are the very difficult questions. These are very simple questions and all are uh, by reasoning only. Very simple. Any turbulence creates a lot of turbulence. Yellow, red, mixture, orange. But when it's laminar, it's only red. And the pressure between the two atria, blue, two atria first... are low pressure zones. So there should not be so much difference that that is enough to cause enough turbulence to create turbulent flow. Okay. The laminar flow having the butterfly distribution or appearance. This is the classical description. Actually, in ASD, there is special equalization between the two atrium, but the why the flow is from left to right. Uh, left sided flow is more than right. In... So why is it moving from left to right? Why is it moving from left to right? Same. There's no pressure gradient. One advanced question. Can anyone tell me the importance of pulse type Doppler in a patient with atrial septal defect? Classical observation. Before the advent of color Doppler echocardiography, whenever human being just had only pulse type and continuous wave in their hand, whenever you are placing the sample volume at the level of the defect in the interactive septum in the subcostal view, there, there was classically triphasic flow at the site of defect. And with that, and another important sign that was available by 2D echocardiography at that time, that also helped a lot for confirmation of the diagnosis of ASD by echocardiography. What was that sign, 2D echocardiography sign? Can anyone tell? T sign, good. What is the T sign? Just in the interactive septum, at the defect, margin of the defect, the Echogenicity is increased in a transverse manner, giving the horizontal limb of T. So this is the T sign that also helped before the advent of echocardiography. After the advent of echocardiography, echocardiography virtually those signs we have forgotten. Okay. Any other echocardiography? Modality of echocardiography that can help? Help or in both Transesophageal. Before that, Transesophageal. another very important thing is to estimate the pulmonary arterial pressure. Huh? Well, another historical importance is the contrast echocardiogram. Right, right. This is very important at that time. Yes, and sometimes also, even today, contrast echocardiography. <laughs> 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 Okay, 
then uh, uh, you you have a, another second diagnosis that is the patient may have mitral regurgitation. Yes, so sir. for this patient particularly, echocardiography should play a very vital role. Whether this may be actually having mitral regurgitation or not, or if mitral regurgitation is present, what may be the underlying etiology of mitral regurgitation, and what is the importance of this in this patient? What is the importance in your patient, particular this patient? What is the importance of making or confirming the diagnosis of mitral regurgitation, particular? Uh, because uh, associated management of mitral regurgitation. Uh, how how can <coughs> you be beneficial? The, modalities. the management modality may change drastically. If the lady is having significant mitral regurgitation, you are not probably going to perform device closure. No, sir. No? Mm -hmm. And if the patient is having non significant or even no mitral regurgitation, the patient may be very simple to be dealt with by interventional management, Dr. Momen, or someone else. Okay. So, Echocardiography, with or without the diagnosis of mitral regurgitation, plays a drastic role regarding future planning of the management of this patient. Huh? Yes, sir. Can anything, sir? I think, from uh, the management perspective of investigation, mm -hmm. what are the investigation to management? Huh? Uh, medical management mm -hmm. and also interventional and surgical. Medical management, including uh, treatment of symptoms and associated complications, if any present, uh, like uh, if any associated <coughs> uh, 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 complications like right heart failure, also uh, infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis. Do you think this lady is having infective endocarditis? Uh, no, sir. Right, right heart failure. failure. This lady is having right heart we failure. We have patients in pocket. Why? But in a simple LT case, it's not important. This is very important. In this particular patient, Sari is uh, likely, uh, Sari is just asking you whether the prophylaxis for infected endocarditis is important here or not. Mm. Yes, sir. Why? We know that the classical learning and teaching is that in case of uncomplicated atrial septal defect, no need for infective endocarditis prophylaxis. But this patient may merit the prophylaxis for infective endocarditis. Why? Because associated mitral valve right. problem. Mitral because valve if you are yes. right that your patient is having significant mitral regurgitation, the underlying cause may be mitral valve prolapse or cleft mitral, mitral valve or anything else that may merit from prophylaxis. prophylaxis. Okay. What else? Uh, interventional management like uh, device closure. And also- Do you think this patient needs interventional management? Is this a patient? One of the contraindication for uh, ASD closure is what? Pulmonary hypertension. Yeah, no, no, no. Not pulmonary hypertension. This is MR. Mitral regurgitation. You, you cannot do it. I said mainly contraindication. If the diagnosis is really I mitral regurgitation, significant, then there is no scope for device closure. And this will not serve you the entire part of Surgical. I would go for surgical. Surgical. For surgical. Surgical. surgical Anything else? I think there's like a surgery. 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 Which surgery do you think may be fit for this lady? Mm -hmm. Finally, that will depend on the confirmation of the diagnosis. Okay. Yes, and sir. One thing is that pericardial patch closure of the SD. And next. Next. You have two lesions. Two lesions. Two lesions. Mitral regurgitation treatment mitral will depend on the underlying, underlying cause. Underlying cause. If yes. this is cleft mitral leaflet, say, in both mitral leaflet, mitral leaflet this, and this sometimes can be repaired. We, they can be repaired. Uh, if it is repair. prolapsed, repair. repair is the choice. Maybe not may the dealt replaced. with by repair simple. Uh, and if nothing is possible in that case, there may be in here. Mitral sir, replacement. Sir, it's very important to qualify the severity of mitral regurgitation. If it is mild, we can do the intervention also. But if it is moderate to severe mitral regurgitation, we will uh, send it to the surgeon. And the aim is that the surgeon will close the uh, ASD and repair the mitral valve. Excellent. It uh, is yes. not the 
we never uh, need to replace the verb. We want to replace the verb because that will be a, another burden for her for a lifelong anticoagulation. Always and try to repair. Exactly and so. in uh, developed countries, mitral valve prolapse, 99% they repair. Only 1% Excellent. requires mitral valve replacement. And But unfortunately, in our country, so far, repair is not popularized by the surgeon. They are not, uh, someone uh, may be interested nowadays, but now still today, uh, mitral valve repair is uh, hard to do and it is difficult. But the aim is to repair. Monor, Monor, Ekta question, Monor, Ekta question, I mean, शांत Send for cardiac catheterization. Why? <clears throat> I am not likely you know, sending this patient for an invasive procedure. If I am confident that I am doing it in a comprehensive manner, then why am I going to send this patient for an invasive investigation? Hmm? What are the indication of cardiac hmm. catheterization in a patient with ASD? And this is commonly asked in the exam. For all the congenital heart diseases, virtually all the congenital heart diseases, one question is out. That is, what are the indications for cardiac catheterization in 2021? Classically, cardiac catheterization was a must. You say in context of this patient. Yeah. Yeah. Unless the patient is aged, when we think the acute coronary artery disactivate, you do not need to do the catheterization anymore. Okay, patient borderline. Hey, what about borderline case? This is very important. If you go through the 2019 ESC guideline for adult congenital heart disease, if in a case with say ASD, if the PVR is more than five puts you need. In that case, you are not going to uh, do directly. You have to perform uh, cardiac catheterization and reversibility. And if it, with reversibility, if it comes below five or with treatment of pulmonary hypertension, this is below five. In that case, you may proceed for surgery or device closure, otherwise not. So, there are some there are some residual indications in case of borderline cases. Classical teaching was that up to eight hours unit, you could perform surgery or device closure directly. And after 13 or 15 hours unit, this is irreversible. And the gray zone between eight and 15 or 13, you have to take decision case by case with cardiac catheterization and reversibility. But the threshold has become lowered now in the new guideline. इम्प्रुवमेंट एंड उल I think you will uh, uh, perform in a better way in future. You will be able to present in a more logical and more comprehensive way, missing less. And also, uh, you may be more confident regarding the crossing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you.
আমাদের পরে আমাদের কিন্তু চমৎকার একটা প্রেজেন্টেশন বসে আছি আমরা ডক্টর আবুল মোমে সে পুরো জিনিসটা বলবে আমাদেরকে এটা কম্প্রিহেন্সিভ প্রেজেন্টেশন কারণ আমরা এখন বইগুলো কিন্তু ভালো পাচ্ছি না যেখানে সবগুলো বই একসাথে আছে আশা করছি আমরা ওয়েট করছি যে সেটা মোমেনের প্রেজেন্টেশনে আমরা থাকবে আর্কাইভে থাকবে তোমরা রাতে দেখতে পারবে এটা আমাদের জন্য একটা হিস্টোরিক্যাল আর্কাইভ হয়ে থাকবে থ্যাংক ইউ তোমাকে আমি খালিদ মোসিন সাকে অনুরোধ করবো স্যার একটু একটু কমেন্ট করেন মোমেন আসো মোমেন রেডি করতে রেডি করতে করতে আমরা বোধ যেতে পারি এখানে <laughs> <laughs> accustomed so whatever it is uh, you have uh, in, in congenital heart disease the history taking I, i missed your history part actually so there are a few things in the history like the uh, the how the child has grown up you, you start from the antenatal period uh, whether the parents are consanguineous there was there any antenatal history significant infection or drug in the mother whatever in her delivery situation how the child grew up what were the milestones of development he have to mention in uh, it's a format for all congenital heart disease okay sir yes you you don't miss that and particularly in girl in case of girls you have to think about the social aspect as well the in her forthcoming marriage child bearing uh, issues you have to address very in a very meticulous way yes sir particularly about girls in in case of boys it is of less importance but you have to in case of uh, female and the in this girl she has got a mitral valve lesion so if you put a mechanical valve you you, you sub, subject her to anticoagulation. anticoagulation and with subsequent pregnancy embryopathy in the pregnancy so if, if you, you have to prove to the examiner that you are a socially conscious physician the examiner will be very much inclined to know about that okay so don't don't miss the social aspect eh? isn't it so i, I wish you all the best and okay. wish all, the other examinees the best and you practice in a thinking manner it, 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 you are, you are a, you have to prove yourself to the examiner you are a, a knowledgeable candidate you are an empathic candidate and you have practiced the things over and over again you have to prove them thank you okay. thank you uh, professor mishkat amar sir professor mishkat amar sir shunte pachhen sir apni ha shunte pachhi ami sir apni ektu comment koren sir chotto chotto ko ekta comment korbo sir sure sir care sector le bhai purano dine teacher ra basic jish kore char ta cause hi tara shunte chay dui ta cause to bolai hoye je ekta holo christian ball ekta ison manger e chhara unroof coronary sinus jeta কিছু <laughs> <laughs> It is so important echocardiographically when we address the patient with atrial septal defect, whether he has got ASD or not. It is a confusing and it is a slippery slope. It could be a mistake, even uh, experienced echocardiographer. It could be a mistake. 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 Left atrium, right atrium, blood flow, right atrium, right ventricle, tonic, which is capacious. কিন্তু পার্টিকুলারলি এই پیشنটের কথাই যদি আমরা ধরি তাহলে এই پیشنট কিন্তু পালমোনারি হাইপারটেনশন ডেভেলপ করেছে এবং রাইট ভেন্ট্রিকুলার কিন্তু কমপ্লায়েন্সটা কমে গেছে তার মানে ভার্চুয়ালি देयर ক্যান বি লিটল ডিফারেন্স বিটুইন লেফট অ্যাট্রিয়াম এন্ড রাইট অ্যাট্রিয়াল پیشنট پیشنট আসলে ডিফারেন্স থাকে কিন্তু ক্যাপাসিটিটাও রাইট ভেন্ট্রিকুলার কমে আসে এই ক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু ল্যামিনার ফ্লো নাও পেতে পারি তো ইন অ্যাবসেন্স অফ ল্যামিনার ফ্লো এই پیشنটের কিন্তু খুবই কনফিউশন লাগবে যে ফ্লো তো নাই আমরা ডিফেক্ট পাইতাছি কিন্তু ফ্লো তো নাই আসলে এটাকে আসলে এই দিনে ডিল করতে দ্যাট ইজ দ্য দ্যাট ইজ দ্য ট্রিকি ডিফিকাল্ট কোশ্চেন মানে পোরশন আর এখানে ডক্টর মোমেন আছেন মোমেনের সামনে খুব বলতে চাই না এটা কিন্তু ট্রান্সেসিফিজাইলিকো আমি আসলে অনেক বছর ধরে মানে প্রায় 20 বছর ধরে আমার যে অভিজ্ঞতা সেটা হলো 
in few cases you may not be able to see the uh, ivc rim ivc rim ta kintu sobshomoy transesophageal amra to transesophageal er kotha boli onek shomoy je rim dekhar jonno to seta kintu jodi ivc rim er bela shei confusion ta hoy ivc rim kintu onek khetrei transesophageal e dekha jana borong subcostal view te ashole jodi thin and lean person hoy kima subcostal view jodi khub bhalo hoy tahole transesophageal kotha chinta na korai bhalo সেই সমস্ত ক্ষেত্রে সাবকস্টাল ভিউতে প্রচুর প্রচুর ইনফরমেশন পাওয়া যায় এবং হ্যাঁ এটাই সত্যি কথা যে আমরা এখনো প্রচুর ইয়ার বাবল কন্ট্রাস্ট করি এল টি কনফিউশন দূর করার জন্য উনিশশো পঁচাশি সালে একমাত্র মেশিন ছিল আমাদের টু ডি ইকো আমাদের পুরানো সরোয়ার দিয়ে হাসপাতালে তখনও আমি দেখছি ইয়ার বাবল কন্ট্রাস্ট ইকো করতে আজকে পঁয়ত্রিশ ছত্রিশ বছর পরে আমার মনে হয় স্টিল ইট হ্যাজ গড সাম প্লেস ইন মেকিং তো ইকো অ্যান্ড এস ডি কিন্তু একটা ইস দ্য ভেরি ট্রিকি প্র্যাকটিক্যাল লাইফে এটা খুবই অঙ্গাঙ্গি ভাবে জড়িত মনোয়ারের যে কথাটা বলছে যে মানে ট্রাইফেজিক ফ্লো সেটা সবাই সবসময় আমাদের দেখা উচিত যখনই কোনো পেশেন্ট দেখি তখন বলা উচিত যে একটু আমাদের একটু দেখা দেন পাস ওয়েভের কি করে ট্রাইফাইজ ট্রাইফেজিক ফ্লোগুলো দেখা যায় বিশেষ করে ইকো করার সময় আরও খেয়াল করা উচিত যে মানে পিএলবিএসি আছে কি না পার্সিয়াল অ্যানিমালস ভেনাস ড্রেনাস আছে কি না আমরা কিছু কিছু পেশেন্টের থ্রি ডাইমেনশনাল ট্রান্সফার আছে কী করি সেটা হলো যে সমস্ত পেশেন্টদের ডিভাইস ক্লোজারের জন্য আমি জানি না মনোরের এক্সপিরিয়েন্স কি আমাদের বেশ ভালো এক্সপিরিয়েন্স বেলুন সাইজিং খুব একটা না করলেও চলে যদি থ্রি ডাইমেনশনাল ইকো কার্ডিওগ্রাফিতে আমরা মানে প্রপার সাইজিংটা করে দিতে পারি এগুলো হলো ফিউ অবজারভেশন আর আজকের ওর রেলিটিভলি আমি একটু মানে একটু 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 ব্রুটাল হই কারণ খালেদ মহসিনের মানে হি হ্যাজ বিন ভেরি সুইট অল ওভার অল ওভার হিজ লাইফ হি হ্যাজ বিন ভেরি সুইট আজকে খুব মানে খুব সফটলি অ্যাপ্রিসিয়েটও করলো কিন্তু আমি স্লাইটলি ডিফার করবো আজকে তোমার প্রেজেন্টেশনটা তোমার আগের যারা প্রেজেন্টেশন করছে তাদের তুলনায় খানিকটা দুর্বল হয়েছে ট্রাই টু ইম্প্রুভ ঠিক আছে কমেন্ট শেষ থ্যাংক ইউ আই রিকোয়েস্টিং ডক্টর আবুল আবুল মামেন uh he is the supervisor cardiology and icbd uh please dr momen thank you sir thank you uh, the uh, organizer for inviting me for this uh, clinical examination session my part uh, to focus mainly on the clinical examination of asynotic congenital heart disease for general examination of asd may be normal but central cyanosis and clubbing may be present if there is associated asenmenger syndrome Cardiovascular examination uh, inspection may be normal, usually no visible impulse, and the pul uh, pulpation appears with normal in quality and look position. The pulmonary component of the second heart sound, that is P2, may be palpable, and parasternal lift may be present if there is a feature. These are the features of pulmonary hypertension. Usually, there is no thrill. First heart sound is loud. Second heart sound, the wide and fixed splitting of the second heart sound, the fixed means the splitting does not vary with respiration. There is a ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area, grade 2 to 3 over 6, as flow murmur not associated with thrill, so it never be a grade 4 murmur. Occasionally, low pitch diastole flow murmur, that is MDM, in the lower parasternal area due to the increased flow across the tricuspid valve. So we can get a MDM in the tricuspid area due to increased flow across the tricuspid valve. Both murmurs increases with inspiration. So these are the right-sided murmur. This will be increases with inspiration. And these are the site of the murmur. Look at the A2, P2 is wide and fixed, splitted, and the uh, quality of the murmur. The ejection systolic murmur that uh, start before first, uh, after first heart, the second heart sound. And the clinical signs of pulmonary hypertension. These are the four clinical signs of pulmonary hypertension. And the fifth may be added the pulmonary regurgitation murmur. So JVP prominent A wave. P2 palpable, parasternal lift, P2 loud, and the early diastolic murmur, that is uh, Graham steel murmur of the pulmonary regurgitation. The fifth may be added. So second heart sound, we have to know the quality of the second sound. What is the normal second heart? P2 and A2 are best heard in the diaphragm of the stethoscope in the left second intercostal space. In pulmonary area, A2 is louder than P2, especially in children. P2 is louder in pulmonary hypertension. And where P2 is soft, when there is a PA pressure, diastolic pressure is low. So this is the pulmonary stenosis, tetralogy of fallot, and tricuspid atresia. The normal splitting, what do we mean by the normal splitting? The normally A2 comes ahead of P2. It means the splitting of the second heart sound. Degree of splitting varies with respiration, increasing with inspiration, and decreasing or becoming a single 
in expiration. So during inspiration, increase negative intrathoracic pressure, increase venous return of the right side of the heart, prolonged sorry, prolonged RV ejection time, delayed closure of the pulmonary valve, and wide splitting. So during inspiration, the splitting is wide. Wide splitting of second heart zone. What are the causes? Wide splitting may occurs in two ways. Either the P is if A2 is early and P2 is delayed. So what are the causes of P2 delayed? RV volume overload. This may be the ASD, PAB, PC, RV pressure overload during prolonged uh, RV ejection time, pulmonary stenosis, right pulmonary blast block, a delay in the electrical activation of the RV, which delays the RV ejection, mitral regurgitation, earlier AV closer. So A2 becomes earlier. So there is a wide splitting. AV closer due to rapid emptying of LV. So these are the mechanisms of wide splitting. In ASD, why S2 is wide and fixed splitting. Wide splitting, RV volume overload, the amount of blood pressure by the RV increase, so RV emptying time increase, P2 delayed. So this is the wide, cause of wide. Fixed splitting, splitting not varies within respiration due to equalization of volume of two atria, equalization of volume of two atria through ASD. Atria acting as common chamber because as Khaled Mohsens are already taken, there is no pressure difference in fact. So why there is, uh, so the atria acts like single chamber. What is the paradoxical or reverse splitting of second heart zone? The P2 occurs ahead of A2 and splitting we usually find in inspiration. Reverse splitting we will get in expiration. It occurs in delayed LV of depolarization, that is right left bundle branch block and delayed LV emptying, severe aortic stenosis among large PDA because the LV ejection is time is prolonged. So A2 comes after P2 and it will be found in expiration. What is ejection systolic murmur? We all know murmur starting after some time of interval of first heart sound, reaching peak in mid systole or late systole, ending before second heart sound. So both first and second heart sound are audible. What are the causes of Ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area, ASD due to increased flow, pulmonary stenosis due to turbulent flow, pregnancy, thyrotoxicosis, fever, anemia, functional flow murmur, and sometimes aortic stenosis murmur, tough, and sometimes in PDA, we can also see the ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area. In During heart murmur, heart murmur may be pathological or non-pathological. Pathological means there is a structural abnormality, non-pathological, there is no structural abnormality. Non-pathological murmur can be functional or innocent murmur. Functional murmur, there may be a physiological explanation of murmur. So anemia, thyrotoxicosis, pregnancy, these are the physiological explanation. But in innocent murmur, there is no structural abnormality, no physiological explanation. So these are the innocent murmur. And we can also get the innocent murmur in the pulmonary areas. For that reason, we are discussing the innocent murmur. These are the common innocent murmur, classical vibratory steel murmurs. Uh, young uh, children or young adolescent patient, pulmonary ejection murmur. Believe it or not, a few days, few days back, we I am uh, a complete uh, uh, done an ASD device closure of a 14 years girl, large ASD, 32 millimeter. After device closure, I am getting the murmur. I am so afraid of sir. I am so afraid of. I check it by all echocardiograms. There is no residual shunt. But where is the murmur? So this is the pulmonary ejection murmur. And the patient age was 13, 14 years. And she is a lean and thin girl. For that reason, if we know that, there will be no, um, no fear of uh, any residual shunt or everything. So these are the uh, common innocent murmur, pulmonary flow murmur, venous arm, carotid bruit. There are seven S key features of innocent murmur. Soft low amplitude, systolic murmur, short duration, sound are normal, when first and second hearts are normal, symptomless, special tests, the x-ray and ECGs are normal, standing and sitting changes with position and intensity usually one to three over six grade, usually not associated with any thrill. Features of functional flow murmur, localized systolic, soft murmur, no significant postural change in murmur, usually there is a thrill, Thrill, maybe some usually there is no thrill, there is uh, there is no cardiomegaly. Second heart sound may be normal and murmur disappears after correction of the cause. After correction of the anemia, thyrotoxicosis, pregnancy, everything uh, the murmur will disappear. ASD versus mitral stenosis. This is the one of the most common differential diagnoses. Splitting of second heart zone may be confused with the opening snap. 
mid diastolic marble may be present in SD due to increased flow across the tricuspid valve, but it is hard in tricuspid area, not in apex, but in a mitral stenosis, it will be hard in apex. What is opening snap and how it confused with the splitting? The opening snap is high frequency early diastolic sound associated with mitral tricuspid opening. In mitral stenosis, the opening of the mitral uh, valve produces the high frequency opening snap. Opening snap best heard in the lower sternal edge with the diaphragm. It is difficult to distinguish from widely split second heart sound, but normally the opening snap occur later in the diastole uh, than the P2. So in A2, P2, then we will heard the opening snap. So how can we differentiate? Careful auscultation over the left second intercostal space in supine position during both phases of respiration reveals three high frequency sounds near each other during inspiration. The initial two are the two component of second heart sound, that A2 and P2. The third is opening snap. The recognition of these three sounds during inspiration helps to differentiate mitral stenosis from ASD. In ASD, only the two component is S2, uh, that is A2 and P2 will be hard during expiration and inspiration, but opening snap will be hard also in um, both A2, P2 and opening snap. Three sounds will be hard in mitral stenosis. And the opening snap, what does it indicate? Will be present in severe mitral stenosis with pliable valve leaflet. In there is heavy calcified valve, it will be open, uh, it will be absent. ASD with pulmonary hypertension and Eisenmenger syndrome. Functional impairment, there is a NOHA class three, class four symptoms, cyanosis, clubbing. There is a prominent A wave that is due to RVI or RA hypertrophy. Persistent parasternal hip, P2 palpable and loud. The wide fixed splitting of second heart sound and tricuspid flow murmur disappear. So there will be no wide and fixed splitting of the second heart sound. The tricuspid MDM is, will be disappeared. The mystery murmur, that is the ASD murmur, will be replaced by softer and shorter murmur. A high frequency early diastolic murmur, that is Graham steel murmur of malmonary regurgitation may be heard. And I, 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 I'm uh, uh, present in one examination where the examiner asked which ASD first produced pulmonary hypertension. I have to go through the literature. There is a confusion between the, between the examiners and the students also. And I have to search it that it is the sinus venosus defect developed pulmonary hypertension at an earlier age compared to the other form of pulmonary hypertension, uh, other form of ASD. Somebody was confused with pri uh, ASD primum but it is uh, from with reference, I am telling you that it is the sinus venosus of a pulmonary uh, type, of, uh, type of ASD which develop pulmonary hypertension early. Some relevant information about ASD. Th these are the type of ASD we all know that 75% cases of ASD second arm. It is associated with halt or arm, Noonan syndrome, Down syndrome, Kleinfeld syndrome, and others. Partial anomalous venous drainers may be associated. Associated lesion is always asked in your exam. So what are the associated lesion in uh, ASD secondum? Pulmonary valvular stenosis, VSD, pulmonary artery, branch stenosis, persistent left superior vena cava, mitral valve prolapse is associated with uh, ASD secondum and mitral valves. Uh, and this is the primum defect, 25% cases. And associated with Down syndrome in 25% cases, um, ASD primum. And it is the uh, cleft mitral leaflet where uh, is, primum is associated with the cleft anterior mitral leaflet. Natural history, spontaneous closure occurs in 80% cases between three to eight millimeter of ASD before the age of one and a half years. More than eight millimeter rarely cause closes spontaneously. Spontaneous closure is unlikely to occur after four years of age. Most children remains active and asymptomatic symptoms appear as the age advances. Rarely congestive heart failure develops. If a large defect remains untreated and congestive heart failure, pulmonary hypertension begin to develop in adults who are in 20s and 30s, and it becomes common after age of 40. Life expectancy is not normal in unrepaired patient with mortality increasing by 6% per year after the age of 40. We have some confusion that the adult ASD patient should we close it or not, the patient is relatively asymptomatic or not. So this confusion should not be. Pulmonary vascular resistance is a progressive disease and chronic volume overload, elevated pulmonary arterial pressure, ventricular dysfunction, and AV valve re regurgitation all contributing to the atrial stretching. So atrial arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation is a common. So what are the causes? These are the causes of atrial arrhythmia. 
volume overload, elevated pulmonary pressure, ventricular dysfunction, AV valve regurgitation, all producing atrial stretching. Infective endocarditis does not occur in patient with isolated ASD, but patient with ASD repaired with residual ASD or residual shunt, they are the uh, candidate for infective endocarditis. Cerebrovascular accident resulting from paradoxical embolization through ASD is rare complication. So hemodynamically significant ASD, regardless of symptom, if untreated, functional limitation will be there. Frequent atrial arrhythmia will be there. Increased pulmonary hypertension, right heart failure, more Eisenmenger syndrome, and decreased life expectancy. So every uh, ASD should be caused if it is hemodynamically significant. So these are the ASD uh, clinic classical feature that we uh, ECG. I, I am uh, not prepared this slide. I cut it from another presentation because these are the frequently asked examination. So these are the incomplete RBBB is 90 to 95% association, right bronchial blunt block, RB hypertrophy, fast decay heart block. This is the, another sign, crocketase sign. This is the biphasic sign in the lead two, three ABF QRS complex. There is a uh, notch in the RO wave. It is also present in ASD. In ASD primum, the uh, incomplete right bundle branch block, left axis deviation. These are the extra signs. These are the signs. Cardiomegaly, they may be present because the RV hypertrophy and the RV type of effects. And look at the right lower pulmonary brain uh, artery. Right lower pulmonary artery, there is a uh, there is a cut mark if it is more than the right bronchus diameter or it is so more than 17 millimeters in case of male and more than 16 millimeter in case of female, it indicates a significant shunt. And we have to clarify what is plethoric lung field. The plethoric lung field and the pulmonary conus is bulb. And if we divide this lung field by three, by three quarter, this is the medial, medial and lateral. If the vascularity, normal vascularity, what is the normal vascularity? We will find the vascularity up to the middle. But if it is vascularity present here, that here is the vascularity is also here. So it is, is the lateral one third, it is plethoric. So these are the signs. Inoperable sign, we can also find from the uh, X-ray. Normal heart size, heart size becomes normal. Normal or reduced vascularity. Normal vascularity is not expected in ASD because plethora, plethora is the hallmark of ASD. So if there is a normal or reduced vascularity and evidence of pruning with dilated hilar pulmonary artery and rapid decline of vessel. These vessels, there is a rapid decline. Here is here, here the ends of, uh, these are the pruning signs. So these are the inoperable signs of ASD. And this is one of the patient with Schmitter syndrome. There is a uh, um, um, uh, and partial anomalous venous drain in Schmitter's vein, which are draining into the RA. So this is a rare X-ray. And this is the guideline which we, we are following before the 2020 guideline of uh, ESC. For any shunt lesion, if it is significant, more than 1.5 is to 1, oxygen saturation more than 95, and left to right shunt, present, operable. But if the absent, then the if then we'll go do the catheterization. If the cardiac catheterization PVR is less than six, here the cutoff value is six and eight. But the newer guideline is also decreasing, as Dr. Monoar also says. Six, it is operable. But if it is six to eight and more than eight, we have to go to the acute pulmonary vasodilator, acute vascular vasodilator testing. Huh? Acute vasodilator testing. If it is positive, we can operate or uh, and, and give the standard. If it is negative, then we'll treat the pulmonary hypertension and repeat the catheterization again. If it is positive, then operation is a choice. But what about the, I am short in acute vasodilator testing. Can be done in inhaled nitric oxide, 100% oxygen, inhaled or IV prostaglandin analog, or IV adenosine. Indication to assess the operability of borderline cases of shunt anomaly and vasodilator response in idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, familial pulmonary hypertension for prescribing calcium channel blocker. For not all pulmonary hypertension, for these two particular pulmonary hypertension, we have to do the, what is the interpretation? For shunt lesion, the PVR should be less than six and the PVR-SVR ratio less than 0.3. For IPH or familial idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, decrease of mean pulmonary hypertension at least below for 10 millimeter to below 40 millimeter of market with normal or increased cardiac output. 
and this is the 2020 guideline. Here, another thing comes that the LV disease, whether LV disease is here or not. So here is the cutoff fellow, three operable. Five, it is class two A operable. But if it is more than five, it is they are prescribing anti-pulmonary anti hypertension drugs and repeat after th uh, the cardiac catheterization after three years. And before closing ASD, in an elderly patient, especially, we have to look for the LV disease. If the concomitant LV disease is there, we have to do the balloon occlusion test. Or what we do during our, uh, during our uh, ASD device closure, we deploy the device across the ASD. We first measure the LV EDP first. And after deployment, we wait for five to 10 minutes. Then again, we uh, measure the LV EDP. If the LV EDP more than 20, that that patient will not tolerate ASD device closure. For that uh, reason, it is must for an elderly patient where there's the LV dysfunction or especially LV diastolic dysfunction, we have to careful for before closing of ASD. And these are the all indication. Uh, device closure is preferred method of a second term ASD. And what are the advantages of uh, device closure? We all know. And what are the contraindication of device closure? We all know. These are the VSD. VSD, we have three sizes: size mild, moderate, and large ASD. Small, moderate, and large ASD. So the presentation of the VSD patient will be different according to the size. Small ASD, left to right shunt, that is QPQS ratio less than 1.5 is to 1. And by definition, what is small, what is moderate, and what is large? We will measure the ASD diameter. If it is less than 25% of the aortic annulus, it is small. 25 to 75% it is moderate, and more than 75% of the aortic annulus, it is severe. So there is no LV volume overload or pulmonary hypertension in a small ASD. Adults are generally remaining asymptomatic, present with a systolic murmur, open with a palpable thrill from the VSD. There is risk of infective endocarditis, but the magnitude is low. It is in a minority of cases, the diastolic murmur from aortic regurgitation develops. Moderate side restricted VSD, moderate restricted VSD associated in moderate shunt, that is 1.5 to 2 is to 1. Defect typically measures 25 to 75% of the aortic annulus. And results of mild to moderate volume overload of pulmonary arteries, left atrium, and LV. So there is a volume overload in the left atrium, pulmonary arteries, and the LV. So the often mild to moderate pulmonary hypertension will be there. Adult patient may develop pulmonary arterial hypertension and may be associated with symptoms. Why there is doing symptoms here? Because there is a pulmonary hypertension, symptoms for pulmonary hypertension, or symptoms due to LV volume overload. There may be failure, left ventricular failure. VSD size, large non-restrictive VSD, defined as 70, more than 75% of the aortic annular diameter. Early large left to right shunt. Most infants with large VSD have early shunt. And uh, this patient uh, failure presented the early life LVF. And this should be closed within the first years of uh, life. Progressive pulmonary arterial hypertension in a large VSD remains uncorrected. It is It can progress to pulmonary hypertension. And, and ultimately, they develop with Eisenmenger syndrome. And if VSD associated with Eisenmenger syndrome, the, it is called Eisenmenger, Eisenmenger complex. Is it clear? So VSD clinical findings, inspection apical impulse may be visible and displaced if large defect, may be normal. Apex bit may be in normal position in small VSD, no, no abnormality, but moderate to large VSD, apex bit shifted, palpation hyperkinetic, forceful, ill-sustained, displaced apex, with the, with, if the defect is large. Apical impulse may be in normal position if the defect is small. So it varies with, with the, in a small VSD or murmur is maybe the only finding. Other, everything may be normal. So systolic thrill may be present especially in the small defect and may be absent in large defect. Auscultation, P2, may be loud, may be normal because if there is a pulmonary hypertension, it may be loud. A loud high frequency pan-systolic murmur usually grade three to four over six, almost confined to the left lower sternum edge. So VSD, VSD murmur is usually lower, confined to the left lower sternal edge. It, it has no much radiation. Louder on expiration because it is the left-sided murmur. MDM in the apex. Why that is the MDM? Increased flow across the mitral valve may produce the MDM. 
small VSD, asymptomatic precordial thrill, S2 normal, P2 not palpable, no parasternal lift, smaller VSD, the loud on the murmur, small VSD causes loud high frequency murmur. There is no MDM because there is no increased flow. Moderate VSD, usually symptomatic, apex bit shifted to the left, maybe hyperkinetic, forceful, ill sustained. S2 may be palpable, parasternal lift may be present, systolic thrill occasionally present, but easily, the, as the size of the VSD increases, the murmur intensity decreases, thrill becomes progressively disappeared. MDM may be present in the apex. VSD with acid-mandrel complex, exertional dyspnea, orthopnea, chest pain, syncope, dusky cyanosis, clubbing, polycythemia, raised JVP may be present, prominent A wave due to RB hypertrophy, and B wave if there is concomitant TR. Sign of right heart failure, edema, ascites, and tender hepatomegaly. Precordium, right ventricular lift on palpation, P2 loud, palpable, single. Apex bit is normal position because heart in moderate or large ASD, heart become enlarged during initial phase. When, when there is a pulmonary vascular resistance increases, heart again becomes smaller. So heart size will be really normal. Holocystic, there will be no faint or systolic murmur of VSD. Systolic murmur of VSD will be faint or not. No MDM, holocysteine blowing murmur of the tricuspid regurgitation may be present. Diastolic decrease in the murmur of pulmonary regurgitation may be present. So these are the holocystolic murmur starts with first heart sound, extend up to the second heart sound. So both first and second heart, heart sound is obscured. The differential diagnosis, mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, and ventricular septal defect. These are the uh, different type of VSD murmur. So this is the typical murmur. This is muscular VSD may have, may not have pansystolic murmur. VSD is Eisenmenger syndrome. There is no pansystolic murmur, only the PR murmur, that is the uh, Graham steel murmur. VSD AR, VSD AR, there's the combination of two murmur, one systolic, one diastolic. Unfortunately, in my MD examination, there is a two cases of VSD AR, two cases of VSD AR. And I, and I, I in short case, I'm not directly answering that this is the case of VSDR. I, I asked, I answered that I have some differential diagnosis because VSDR is a not a, norm, uh, a, a normal case or a frequently found case, it's a rare case. If you make a single diagnosis in a short case, rare case, that will be some queries about that. But I, I, am, I am answered that, I answered that, that the, I have some differential diagnosis and I probably said that will be the uh, way to uh, to answer in a rare case in short case. So what are the differential diagnosis of VSD? Pulmonary stenosis, mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, HOCM. VSD versus pulmonary stenosis. JPP usually normal, prominent if there is a pulmonary uh, hypertension uh, or Eisenmenger syndrome. Giant A wave due to RA hypertrophy in pulmonary stenosis. Apex bit. May or not, may not be shifted, but in apex bit, pulmonary stenosis, it is normal in position and location. P2 may be palpable, parasternal lip may be present in VSD with pulmonary hypertension. P2 not palpable, but parasternal lip is present in the pulmonary stenosis. Systolic thrill over the left sternal area, left lower sternal area, and systolic thrill usually pulmonary area. S2 may be normal, P2 may be loud in VSD, but S2 widely split, P2 soft in pulmonary stenosis. The pansystolic murmur almost confined to the lower sternal area and, lo and louder on expiration. The transystolic ejection systolic murmur 2 by 4 by 6, 2 to 4 by 6 in uh, uh, intensity, best heart in pulmonary area, radiate towards the left side of the neck, best heart during inspiration. So there is a respiratory variation of these two murmur. VSDMR, apex may or may not be shifted. Uh, in MR, easily shifted, forceful, ill sustained. P2 palpable, and if there is a pulmonary hypertension, P2 will be loud and palpable, same as mitral regurgitation. S1 is normal in VSD, S1 is soft in MR. Pansystolic thrill over the left lower sternal edge, pansystolic thrill near the apex. The pansystolic murmur located in the lower left lower pulmonary, left lower sternal edge and localized VSD murmur, but pansystolic murmur best heart in the apex radiates towards the axilla. This is the chronic MR, but in acute MR, it may radiate towards the axilla and back, anterior leaflet tear. 
and towards the left sternal border that is posterior leaflet here. So, like VSD murmur, it may hard in the uh, base of the heart if there is an acute mitral regurgitation and the posterior cord rupture. Can VSD be followed up without intervention or surgery? Yes. Yes. Adults with small persistent VSD generally do not require intervention and have an excellent prognosis if there is a normal pulmonary arterial pressure, no chamber enlargement, no aortic regurgitation or aortic cusp prolapse, and no history of infective endocarditis. But this may, patient may develop some complication later on. So follow-up is mandatory. What are the complications? Endocarditis, infective endocarditis, double chamber right ventricle, that is DCRB and aortic regurgitation. So follow-up should be there. Despite increased risk of endocarditis, the incidence is low. The current recommendation is not to use infective endocarditis prophylaxis routinely in a case of BSD. I have a few more slides for in clinical uh, findings of PDA. Pulse is water hammer pulse, rapid upstroke due to ejection of a large volume of blood in an empty aorta, and, and rapid collapse. The collapse is due to rapid decompensation of aortic bl blood through PDA to the pulmonary artery. So rapid upstroke and downstroke. So that's the water hammer pulse. Elevated pulse pressure, that is elevated systolic and lower diastolic pressure. Apex width may be shifted or normal location may be hyperkinetic, forceful or ill-sustained. This is also, if there is a PDA is large, shunt is large, apex will be shifted, there will be forceful ill-sustained, volume overload will be there. So there is a forceful ill-sustained uh, apical impulse. P2 usually normal, but maybe loud if there is a pulmonary hypertension. A systolic thrill may be present in the left upper sternal border. Auscultation, S2 single, for moderate PDA. For a large defect, reverse splitting of the second heart sound because the LV outflow, LV volume will increase and it will take more time for LV and emptying. So A2 will be delayed and it will be comes after P2. So P2, A2, reverse splitting and it will be found in expiration. A continuous loud murmur, machinery murmur, maximum at the first left intercostal space. MDM in the apex may be present due to increased flow across the mitral valve. What is continuous murmur? Murmur that begins in systole, extends up to diastole without interruption. That do not necessarily need to occupy both whole of the systole and diastole. Start with systole, continue without interruption into diastole, but not necessarily whole systole and diastole, they must be present. Continuous murmur results from blood flow from a high pressure chamber or vessel to the lower system associated with persistent pressure gradient between this area during systole and diastole. So there are two terms, the continuous murmur and combination of systolic and diastolic murmur. The upper one is the continuous murmur and the lower one is the pan -pan systolic murmur that, that is what might be uh, we get from VSD AR. There is a pan systolic murmur and early diastolic murmur. So this is a combination of two murmur. So what are the differential diagnosis of continuous murmur? True continuous murmur and combination of two murmur. These are the differential diagnosis. So true continuous murmur as PDA, rupture sinus of valsalva, autopulmonary window, arteriovenous fistula, venous harm. These are the true continuous murmur. But combination of two murmur, aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation, VSD and AR. For my case, I am getting both systolic and diastolic murmur in my short case. I, I ask that I have some differential diagnosis, sir. What are the differential diagnosis? Aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, uh, the, the PDA, uh, rupture sinus of valsalva, then VSDR. I am a number of VSDR. I am a number number of I am a case of the 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 case the Already I'm the bolchi, aortic regurgitation, PDA, large artery venous fistula, hyperkinetic state, the thyrotoxicosis, anemia, and extreme pedicardia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent presentation. Amamraje on a gulo boy getting into it a moment it a compel coach, moment amadhanaje on a deep body lecture. Clinical class. 
আর আইপিডি আসলে যেটা কাজ করছি আমরা আসলে কাজ করছি সূত্র ধরে কাজ করছি আমাদের এখানে তিনটা প্রজন্ম এখানে আমাদের প্রথম থেকে দেখা গেছে যে আব্দুল্লা সাহিবুন্দার স্যার আতাহ আলী স্যার আসছেন খালেদ মসিন স্যার তারপরে মনোয়ার মোমেন অল দ্য বিলিয়ন টিচার এবং আমরা যা আসছি এখানে আই থিঙ্ক রিয়েলি গ্রেটফুল মোমেন খালেদ মসিন স্যার আমাদের সাথে আজ প্রথম থেকে আছেন যদি মেশকাদ আহমদ স্যার আছেন সিলেট থেকে শুনছো নাকি হাইবুল্লাহ সেলিম ডক্টর সেলিম ডক্টর হাইবুল্লাহ সেলিম হ্যাঁ মসিন ভাই প্রথম তার এবং একটা মোমেন্ট যেভাবে বিভিন্ন ধরনের কোয়েশ্চেন ক্রসিং করেছেন এবং এর মাধ্যমে আমার মনে হয় সবগুলাই এই যে পঞ্জিটাল হার্ড ডিজিস সম্পর্কে সব ধরনের কোয়েশ্চেনে উঠে এসেছে এবং পরবর্তীতে চৌধুরী মেশকাম স্যার আরো কমপ্লিমেন্ট দিয়েছেন আমার মনে হয় স্টুডেন্টদের এই ব্যাপারে আর কোনো কোয়েশ্চেন বাকি থাকার কথা না আর পাশাপাশি ডাক্তার মোমেনের পরবর্তী প্রেজেন্টেশন আমার মনে হয় স্টুডেন্টদের বাকি যে কোয়ারি ছিল সেটাও তাদেরকে ক্লিয়ার করেছে আমি শুধু এখানে একটা কথা বলতে চাচ্ছি যে আমাদের স্টুডেন্টরা দরকার <laughs> ডিজিজটা কি জিনিস এবং তার অ্যাসোসিয়েশন যেমন একটা কেসে আজকে এয়ারটেল সেপ্টাল ডিফেক্ট পাশাপাশি ছিল মাইটাল ডিগাইজেশন সুতরাং আমার মনে হয় যে একটা কেস আমি যখনই ডায়াগনোস করে ফেলব সাথে সাথে যে এটাই মূল ডায়াগনোসিস না থেকে ইট মে বি দা অ্যাসোসিয়েশন অফ দা মেইন কনজিটার হার্ট ডিজিজ সেটাও আমাদের স্টুডেন্টদের মাথায় থাকা দরকার কারণ এক্সামিনার অলওয়েজ যে এই জিনিসগুলো খেয়াল করবেন যে যখন একটা এইচ ডি এমআর পাবেন অবশ্যই পরীক্ষাতে দিবেন এই কেসগুলো আমার মনে হয় যে স্টুডেন্টরা অবশ্যই এই জিনিসগুলো পারবে আর পাশাপাশি আমি আইপিডিএকে ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি যে আমাদের প্যানেলশিপ রাখার জন্য এবং তাদের এই যে কোর্সটা কন্টিনিউ করার জন্য যা তার ফলে স্টুডেন্টরা সহজেই এখান থেকে বেনিফিট পাবে আমি ডাক্তার মনোয়ার ডাক্তার মোমেন সবকে ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি যে তারা সুন্দরভাবে এই জিনিসটা কন্ডাক্ট করেছে এবং মৌসিনবাগে সুন্দরভাবে মডারেশন করা এবং আইপিডিআই অথরিটিকে ধন্যবাদ জানিয়ে আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করছি ধন্যবাদ সবাই আসসালামু আলাইকুম আমরা এই পরে কিন্তু একটা ক্লাস নিব যে শর্ট কেস আমরা এসডি ভিডি বিডিএ নিয়ে শর্ট কেস করবো পাঁচ মিনিট শর্ট কেস আজকে একটা শর্ট কেস কথা ছিল টাইমলি হয়নি রোগীটা বসে আছে তোমরা দেখে নিও যারা এখানে আছো শর্ট কেসটা এটা ভালো শর্ট কেস এরপরে কিন্তু একটা করবো আমরা শর্ট কেস নিয়ে স্যার কী বলেন স্যার শর্ট কেস নিয়ে থ্যাংক ইউ ইনসেপ্ট অফ হসপিটালস যে তারা আমাদের সাথে গত দুইটা বছর কষ্ট করে যাচ্ছে অবিরাম আমাদের যে কোনো ধরনের আমাদের যদি ইয়ে থাকে তারা সাথে সাথে সেখানে হাজির হয়ে যাচ্ছে ইনসেপ্টে ধন্যবাদ এবং ক্লাউড মার্কুম আমাদের ইভেন্ট ম্যানেজমেন্ট তাদেরকে ধন্যবাদ আছি পার্টিসিপেন্টস ধন্যবাদ আছি তো আই এম রিকোয়েস্টিং প্রফেসর খালেদ মহসিন আওয়ার কোচ চেয়ারম্যান আইপিডিআই প্লিজ কনক্লুড দ্য সেশন Thank you, Dr. Mohsin and Prof. Abdul Wadud Chaudhuri for persistently and enthusiastically continuing this uh, program. Actually, it's uh, very difficult to organize a clinical class involving real patients, real life patients. And I also like to thank the resource persons 
particularly Dr. Monwar and Dr. Momen. Uh, actually, congenital heart disease is a part and parcel of our cardiology clinical practice. But nowadays, when we were students, we used to have uh, good exposure in uh, adult and as well as con congenital heart disease. But with the separation of pediatric cardiology, uh, I think our future cardiologists' exposure in congenital heart disease will be a bit more challenging than us. There is no doubt about it. So please be conversant with the congenital, even you don't pursue a career in pediatric cardiology, because in your day-to-day -day practice, you will need that. And, you, and we have, I have already mentioned that there's some uh, tits and bits in the history taking, uh, which starts from the uh, maternal antenatal history. So, and another thing in when we are assessing a child for examination purpose, it is internationally accepted that you should mention the percentiles of weight and height, though we don't do it by ourselves and the mid-arm circumference. As we label a patient with the definition failure to thrive, these three things we need to emphasize. So please, if possible, you assess the percentile of growth. This is uh, important. And another thing, Dr. Moment's last uh, part of his lecture that the differential diagnosis of a continuous murmur. We must emphasize that by hemodynamics in a continuous murmur, blood flows in the same direction, both in the systole and in the diastole. But if it flows in a two different direction, this is not a continuous murmur. This is a to and fro murmur. That is the VSD and AR. In systole, it's going in one direction. And in diastole, it's going in a separate direction. But in PDA, rupture sinus of Valsalva or autopulmonary window, the blood is moving in the same direction, both in the systole and diastole. We should be aware of this hemodynamics whenever we are telling a differential diagnosis in the examination. Okay. And I wish you all the best. And I wish to congratulate our today's examinee. He performed very bravely and uh, with a lot of courage and I hope you will all do the same in the mock situation as well as in the exam hall. And I, would, I again thank IPDI to give you, for giving an opportunity to all of us to interact in a beautiful surrounding. Uh, and with this, I want to conclude for today. Thank you so much. Actually, both of you get a Calcaro Shawai, a Zoom link. Yeah. Hello, IP Day link. Eta Eta Shawai to Monarchobe, Jama Dek, the YouTube channel. It could be simple www.hello.health. Click Kole, Amade YouTube channel to Lasbe, Ekane, number the watch, Jekani, the desired classes, click Kole, automatically. Okay, playlist, shop will class Liachi. Tobe, Amra, virtual clean classroom, Vita Pichiachi. Karan Amra, it take edit Kutuhe, Hole Amra Ji Doshoi, Art number Bondo Kanachi. Okay, among again, the clean classroom, shop will be in Pajabe. Thank you all. Thank you.